Evan Ginsberg back with another edition of Evan Ginsberg's Legends TV. Blessed to have not one but two co-hosts from classic pop culture radio, Steve Ludwig, and comedian Nick Alexander. Woo! There you go. Yeah. There you go. Young legend. That's right. That's right. Give it up for the young legend. A soon-to-be legend. Soon-to-be, yes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and um, I hate to start the show on a kind of samba note, but Steve recently lost his, uh, his pug, Jem. Yeah. Tell us a little about yeah, that. Yeah, well, thanks, Evan. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you mentioned that now Jem we've had for 15 plus years. He was, you know, the best dog in the world. Everyone can say that about their dog, and I won't argue with them. But I just brought a picture, with my favorite picture with Jem. And uh, being you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, I, I, I made a very short video that I wanted to share with the audience. You know, you know, owners and their dogs start to look alike. I kind of see. What do you think, Nick? I kind of see a resemblance. Oh yeah, you got yeah. super in sync. Yeah, That's right. it was very. You can, especially Jem has no hair on the top, and uh, yeah, at, you know. le at least second cousins. Yeah. You guys are start we're starting to morph after a while. <laughs> so, um, my wife Sue gets mad because I've been pooping on the carpet too. That's wow. right. Anyway, so um, if, if Vicky's ready, I just want to show this very short uh, little. Yeah. A little and I, and to I, just, I just want to apologize in advance to Nick because it's hard to follow something like this yeah. with comedy, but this is about Steve's I, late door. I don't want to smile anymore. My mood is down. I, I'm, yeah. that's right. I'm, I'm feeling, you know, sad. That's right. Yeah. Well, this will bring you total down. And, and the name of the video is Sorry Jim. It's called Sorry Jim. Okay, Vicky, let's roll Sorry Jim. Hi, everybody. It's Steve. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Evan was nice enough to mention that my beloved dog, Jem, passed away. Uh, he gave my wife and me 15 plus wonderful years. And um, being Evan mentioned him to you, I hope you don't mind, but I thought I would share this with you. We had our little boy cremated. And uh, he'll always be with us in the house here, so I just wanted to share it with you. <sighs> <coughs> Sorry, Jim. Sorry, Jim. Of all the bum luck. <laughs> yes, uh, right. You know, it's a shame, but... Um, yeah. All right, now... Nick, Nick was tearing up over there. Yeah, right? I, I, yeah. Little, little... Thanks for holding it together, uh, Nick. Just, yes. just to prove that it was all in good fun, uh, here is the actual... <laughs> this is, this yes. is so dark. Be careful. This is somber. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, this gem is, is in a plastic bag. That's oh, the wow. real gem, right? I, no, that's yes. the real gem right there. Wow. So uh, I didn't want people careful, to think I was with, totally... With yeah, oh, easy boy, easy boy. What? Okay, he's got to go out, so I'm going to leave him right over here. He's got okay. to make poo poo. He, Nick, sing, he I, sings with the furniture. That's <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> right. He matches. Yeah. So, so I, I wanted to assure my ticket to hell, so I made that that's video. That's right. So Nick, have you ever had to follow a dead dog before? Not, this is the first, Evan. I'm, I'm right. going right. to be honest with you. I've never followed a dog or any animal of that kind. Uh, you they put me in a tough spot. <laughs> I've, I've been yeah. in a lot of tough spots That's in my right. time doing comedy. This is by far the hardest. Well, so. you know, they say that actors hate to work with kids and dogs because they always get shown up. Yeah. Well, this was just ashes, really. That's oh, right. just a okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. You don't think it's hard to compete with ashes, but I think a lot of people <laughs> would beg to differ. That's right. So, Nick, tell us a little about yourself. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, going on about five years now. Five years. Five years, okay. yeah. yeah. I've been doing stand-up pretty, like, hard, you know, consistent. Like, I, you know, you do some mics and some amateur shows, but then you have that moment where it's like, okay, am I going to take this seriously? How bad do I want this? And it was... It wasn't too long after I had touched the stage for the first time where I said I was really going to go after it. So, you know, I've been here you know, about five years. We have a mutual friend in Nico White who started at 14. He's 21 now. He I says hate he's Nico for that, man. <laughs> 2,000 <laughs> shows. Two th he counts his shows. Like, I don't do any of that stuff. Right, like, right. Nico has his, has his book, notebook. He takes his dates down, counts how many spots he's on a week. Like, I just never count. You know, everybody has a different thing, a purpose, a philosophy about how to go about it. Um, I, uh, I'm from New York. I was, I'm from Queens. Um, uh, I lived in Florida for a few years. And, but I always tell Nico, if I had, you know, went to high school and grew up in the city, I probably would have started at 14. I okay. would have been way bigger than you. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right about now, but no, Nico's great. That's my boy. We, uh, were, we were talking earlier um, 
in the old days, and uh -huh. I have friends who have been doing stand-up for 30 years, like Dobie Maxwell, uh -huh. um, yeah. They would get on a uh, major talk show at night, particularly the Tonight Show, right, right. and sometimes overnight, yeah. overnight. Yeah. Like David Steinberg said, he did the Tonight Show for the first time. Mm -hmm. Johnny invited him on the couch, which didn't always happen. Not this sexy couch. That's though. right. Yeah. <laughs> and, he's, Weather. and he said that the next day, he's walking down the street, everybody knew him. Right, and he like, dig, digs instant. out the wazoo, and yeah. the work is great, man. Yeah, it's just a different time now. We, you got to do a lot of different platforms and um and now with social media and building a following and, and it's almost like stand-up comedy now is like uh, it's an afterthought so it's like if you build yourself up as an actor or or a social media presence or internet comic or all these other things and then they go oh and you do stand-up then Fair you're right. like well, yeah. this is the, the stuff i really want the shit i really want to do like the, I, all that was just so you guys can get the attention to my stand-up. Chris you know. Rock said it's very ironic that yeah. you master an art form like stand-up, which, you know, is really tough. Yeah. And then they tell you, don't do stand-up. Do movies, do TV. What's that all about? It's just because, uh, you know, once you start doing movies and television, you're, in, you're making that kind of money. Uh, one, then you're working, you know, two months here, three months there, and then you can just coast and chill. It's hard to get the the urge to sure. the, to want to just get back out there and and you know you know go through you know hardships every night just to get your act right. So you know if guys are taking time off and they go two three four years, it gets kind of like, ooh, I don't want to go back to struggle. Yeah, I, I got right, this. Right. I got three movies that, that right, I'm working right, right. on this year. I, why? And I'm making you know great money. I mean, stand up is great too. It keeps you active, but. Once you, if you take too much time away, then you don't, you don't want to, you don't really want to come back. You just want to kind of. Chris just... Rock was playing arenas, though. That's you yeah. know, you're not sharing that with the. That's not new addition. No, you're right, keeping right. all the money. Right, right. Yeah. That's, yeah. So Chris, Chris is smart. I like the way. I think Chris has the best. Um, how can I say? I think he just has the best approach to it. Like you know, he'll do some movies, will work on a TV show, write some other stuff, keep himself busy, and you know, of course, you know, for his fans. And then every four or five years, he'll say, "All right, I want. I'm ready to." You know, I've lived some life. I've seen some stuff. I want to get back on stage again. Right. And he'll start working his acting. He's one of those guys, when he gets back on stage, he doesn't have anything. He just has these thoughts on a pad. And he'll go for like 45 minutes to an hour in some of the little clubs, like the Comedy Cellar and whatnot, and just work out stuff and work out stuff. And uh, until he starts finding funny shit and then just keeps working it. And, you know, in like two, three years, that's when he's back on the road and then doing the big special. And uh, but he just he puts in the work like no other. You know what he said? He said that he would actually go down to Florida and play like Jewish senior centers. Let's uh -huh. find the toughest audience. Yeah, like he'll imaginable. go to West Palm Beach yeah. and play like older rich, well, just yeah. to see what works. And then he'll go to like he'll spend like a week going to Atlanta and making you know young or or you know uh, middle aged black folks because he just wants to see you know it works does with it everybody. Translate? How does this yeah. translate? And you got to just play the different audiences. You do the L.A. He'll be in, you know improv and. You do Hollywood stuff, and yeah, it's. You know, you know what always amazed me, Nick. Um, how do you remember like what joke comes after the other? I mean, it's maybe a rhetorical question, but no, no, I'd not be not confused. At all. Uh, you know, I'd figure. Oh, I, I'd be thinking, what joke comes next? Here's like, the how thing: do you like this? when you're when you're um, like a comic or an actor, when you're doing something like over and over every night, it becomes it almost becomes like a monologue. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people don't understand that. Like when you're writing jokes, you remember. Same thing with rappers too. It's like you you write these things. And then you're constantly repeating it and trying to memorize it and memorize it and performing it. So if you're doing that two, three times a night, almost every day, you know, months going on months, it just it's like clockwork. Like yeah, that's you don't why even have to think about you it. You don't right? even have to think of it. You can like this. That's why when they say, you know, we were talking about how some guys don't ever change their material. Right. And they can just recite it like that. Like no, mm -hmm. it's just no, no worries. And then, but, but can't that be almost destructive? You take the same 20 minutes on the road and you do it forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that to me, that's just, it's so super late. Right. One is lazy. Um, and then, yeah. you know, you're just coasting. Like I think the whole point of comedy is, is it's, it's uncomfortable. So you're supposed to challenge yourself. You're supposed to dig deep, you know, within yourself. Or, or if you're not that kind of guy who comes from personal truth, you uh, observe and you watch a lot of things, and then constantly challenge yourself to come up with ma uh, material on current events and social and social topics. So you just always have to make yourself uncomfortable, stay uncomfortable, but comfortable at the same time, because you still want to be confident in right. what you're talking about, but you still want to challenge yourself, right. and you know, just making sure that you're always, you know, just um, and sometimes it's bringing a, it. Sometimes yeah. it's important to make the audience a little uncomfortable. Yeah. Like I've been watching comedy for forty years yeah, since the Ed Sullivan. Lot. 
Yo, I'm tired of uh, airplane jokes. I've heard enough <laughs> airplane there's, jokes there's to last There's been a lot of airplane time. material. <laughs> yeah. Can I do my airplane bit? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't have any airplane material. Not, but, not, um, not now, anyway. The funniest airplane joke was when Seinfeld goes, I don't like to think of my seat as a flotation device. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> That's funny. Seinfeld, that dude, man. Yeah. He, he talk about, he can write up, talk about anything. Yeah. I mean... Observational <sighs> humor. He's, he's yeah. the master at that. I, I was watching a Howard Stern interview. Um, and uh, Stern was just, you know, asked, always, Stern always likes to go, he asked the, the questions that, every, that like, people like me always want to know. Like, right. you know, how do you still, you know, enjoy stuff, enjoy life? How do you live life? He's like, what do you mean live life? What, what, are, you, what are you talking about, yeah. Jerry? And then he'll just talk about how he, um, when he's with his wife or whatever, or he's living his day throughout, he's always looking for material. Right, right. Like, I can't live like that. Like, I don't go out there, like, with my radar up. I mean, you right. should have your radar up, but just, I'm not always thinking every little thing that happens could be a joke. And, but his brain works like that, but that's his joy out of life, you know, and it's, it's to each his own. As you mentioned the word uncomfortable. As a young comedian, yeah. in, in 2015, yeah. at any given moment, somebody could pull out a camera, film you. Uh -huh. Are you worried that you're saying something politically incorrect, something that could piss people off, something that uh -uh. could hit the internet? You know, I'm not that offensive. I can't, I can't say, like, I, I, I do... Uh, like shock humor or very like inappropriate or just things that are just you know disgusting or whatever i'm not that kind of comedian i always go from the personal experiences like i take that richard pryor uh route with right. my comedy you know not to say that i'm richard pryor but that's just what what, I, what works for me so i don't ever think i can really be that offensive because i'm always talking about me most of the time and so i don't i mean i don't like being recorded when stuff is like brand new right but i do get it that hey stuff you know, gets on the YouTube or whatever, so you got to just kind of have to take it. But and it could help, it could help in some ways. And you know, I always would rather have my videos out there when I'm when it's at a my materials at a polished stage. Right. right. But uh, yeah, you know, it's but it's if you if you're not that kind of comic, then you don't have anything to worry about. Like I don't see the blogs coming after me because I sure. talk about you know you know me being insecure about women and stuff like that. Right, right, right. You know, I don't think anybody's gonna care about Steve, that. I'm sorry. No, I was gonna say that you know you mentioned like a 20 minute set. Yeah. And obviously it doesn't take you 20 minutes to come up with that. I mean, how many hours does a 20 minute set actually take you? 20 minute you? set if you're if you're like in the circuit, you 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 know, you're going out every night, you're playing two three stages. You can come up with like 15 20 minutes in a good 3 months. So even that's a lot. Not maybe not yeah, I'm saying, 3 months. You know, people think and that's 20 just minutes where it's is 20 like minutes, decent. But, it's like mm -hmm. decent. So but I would say like you have it really effective, I'd say 6. So when guys have like their hour you know, it usually, usually take about two years because it also depends Amazing. on the stage yeah. you're at in comedy. Because like when you're like a headliner, say, let's go somebody like um, like like a Godfrey. Okay, he's not a, a household name. Right. You know, he's a name in some circles depending on what you watch. So a guy like Godfrey, if he does a special, you know, he still works the road and does like improvs and clubs like that. So when you're doing long sets every weekend, you can get to your new hour faster than a guy at my stage where it's like most of the time when I'm playing, doing shows, I'm getting 10 minute spots here, 12 minutes here, 15 minutes there. So, you know, it takes me longer to get comfortable in that space of an hour because I don't get a chance to, to perform for that long right. of a time. Yeah. But as far as Godfrey, he can get his new hour in maybe like a year if he's really trying to get it tight. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, two years or whatever. But me, it takes like maybe, it might take like three to five years before I really like say this is a solid hour. Mm. You know, it's a lot of work, Evan. It's oh, a really? lot of work. Yeah, it's who, just, it's all work. Who are some of your influences? Comedy influences? Well, I'm sure you. Know, we've been going back and forth on Facebook the last right. few weeks. Eddie Murphy is always going to be the number one influence, even if he hasn't touched the stage in 30 years, for the simple fact that like it's more, more. I do love his comedy, but also nostalgia. Like Raw was the first piece of stand-up I ever saw. Okay. My mom, we, my mom, watched. She you saw it in the theater? No, no, no. I, I, wasn't, uh, allowed, I wasn't around. Oh, okay. Then. I was still in my dad's nuts. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> I was still swimming in my... Yeah. Oh, that no, was sweet. My mom... Still in my dad's nuts. She nuts had Raw. She, That's she a rented, beautiful image. She rented Nick. Raw. Thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was swimming around. Yes, right. <laughs> no, so my mom rented Raw because she was... When I used to love his movies, his old movies, we like, you have to see him when he did stand-up. And I said, Eddie Murphy did stand-up? Like, wow. What's that? So she got a tape. Me, her, and my grandmother, we watched Eddie Murphy Raw. I was like 11 years old. And I just balled out laughing and to this day like I can watch Raw anytime and crack up and so you know it's always it's nostalgia mixed with I just I, 
I love his talent and everything he's done. And I even got his album, his comedy album. And, you know, Delirious is really good to me, too. Even though people like Delirious, I guess, more than Raw. But Raw is always going to do it for me because that was the first thing I ever saw. And then when I started really, like, studying comedy, you know, I, Richard Pryor is, is, you know, of course, you see where it comes from. And uh, I'm a big Damon Wayans guy. And I do like Carlin because um, I just love, you know, the way he just shits on everything. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, just, just hard. Steve, to George Carlin. When you buy a pet, you buy a tragedy. Oh, that's a Colin line. That. You, that's a, yeah, you did it to yourself. You oh, put that, put that away. Put that away. Yeah, Colin would be. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. But Colin, if was, he was on this couch, he wouldn't even be talk answering any of your questions. He'd just be shitting on you for bringing. That's it. right. <laughs> that's right. So, you, you puppy in here. Wouldn't be the first person to shit on me. Oh, okay. <laughs> was it? Did he shit on you when he was alive? Did he ever shit on At you? the end, yeah. At he the couldn't end. help it. Couldn't because he couldn't control it. Exactly. Okay. It's another beautiful image to share with the worldwide <laughs> audience. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy breakfast. I know it's swimming in this really happened. Nutsack. This really Girl happened. Shitting on you. <laughs> Two things are guaranteed: you swim in your father's nutsack, and <laughs> somebody shits on you. When your dog <laughs> can't control themselves, they shit on you right before they pass away. Beautiful, beautiful guys. <laughs> uh, Chris Rock. I'm a huge fan oh, of Chris yeah. Rock's work. Yeah. And uh, who else would I say? Like that's that's like my top five. Yeah, Carlin, Eddie. Wayne's prior rock, I would say. Yeah, those are my like. I know people hate this, but when I was your age, yeah. when yeah. I was your age, I went to see Richard Pryor in the movie theaters to mm. see his uh, Concert. comedy specials, comedy yeah. uh, concerts, and in a packed movie theater. I mean, it was a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was dynamic. It was electric. Oh, to yeah. see that in a movie theater. Oh, yeah. And um, which one did you see? Live at both, the Sunset both. and uh, Here and Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those and then, really then maybe. 15 years later, mm -hmm. I saw him live, and he was already sick at the Westbury Music Fair. Uh -huh. And uh, he had giant cue cards, yeah. and he did maybe 45 minutes yeah. instead of two hours, right, and right. he wasn't walking well. And people were actually, like, touching him, patting him, like, goodbye. It was, it was, mm, it was like when we saw Sly Stone. <laughs> it was oh, depressing. Yeah. How was his show? Was he funny, though, or it was kind of... Pissed? You know, it's well, like... Was he compare... better than the average comic? <laughs> yeah, you, but you're comparing him to him, yeah. and you right. can't win. And you can't yeah, win. it's like, yeah. um, you know, I, I, okay, so me and Nico, we go at this all the time, right? So he's a huge Martin Lawrence guy, right? Okay. He, loves Mar he loves Martin Lawrence. So I don't know how much Martin Lawrence you've watched yeah. his stand-up. So he had the first concert film. He did You So Crazy, like in 94. I don't think he touched Richard Pryor. But he didn't touch Pryor. Yeah. And, yeah, he w and he didn't touch Eddie either. Yeah. Was, Nico, he didn't touch Eddie either. Uh <laughs> But it was good. You So Crazy, I thought, was pretty good. I mean, he did about an hour and a half. He had a lot of characters. Martin's always worked more for personality. You know, you're not going to get clever, like, thought-provoking stuff. But he was entertaining. And then he had his, his second concert when he came back after he had the situation with him in the coma and, and collapsing and the, the run tell that. Right. And I hate that special. Mm. Like, it's a great, like, it, it did well. It made a lot of money. But for me, the material just wasn't up to par. And Nico always tries to come at me with, you can't compare the two because Martin took a break, and when he came back, after only six months of being back on the comedy, then he decides to go on tour and shoot the movie. Well, I'm like, first of all, okay, and when you're coming back, you're supposed to spend your time getting your act right, and right. then touring, and then shooting, so that when it comes out, you're really ready for everything to be seen. And I just was like, you can't say... You can't compare it. No, I always compare off the last one. He's made a fortune of money. You he's made. A, I mean, he's, he's at the end of the day, okay. they're all millionaires, and yeah. you know, like I'm not. But and I, but it, I We're still not feel like that approach. Yeah. We're getting there. I, I still feel with that approach to comedy, you still have to put in the work and then make it sure. make it presentable. Like Absolutely. Chris Rock would never do that. Chris Rock wouldn't take all that time off yeah. and then after six months say he's ready to do a special. He's pl he's playing in front of old Jews in Miami Beach. Right. Owning he's, the act. He's owning it. Martin, right. Martin, 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 I love, I love Martin too, but he just, he didn't own it for me. Okay. And, uh, Fair and enough. I just feel like in the same, same way, you know, with Richard and some of those guys, you just gotta, I, I, that preparation, man, it's, it's everything. So. Right. so instead of us talking about everybody else, why don't we see your comedy? We have a video clip yeah. Nick Alexander. This is me Live. on TV too. I did Laughs TV. It was on Fox there and uh, it was a syndicated stand-up show where he takes a bunch of comics and then so it was on Fox one night and uh, My Nine the next night. All and right. it's online too on the Laughs Beautiful. TV channel. So Laughs TV. Let's check out this clip of Nick Alexander. I was a very naive person back in high school. I was very oblivious to the signals when, uh, when girls would try to show me that they would like me. You know, one time I remember this girl, her name was Vanessa. She approached my locker. She's like, hey Nick, 
how you doing? I was wondering if you could help me with algebra. I've been having some troubles. Maybe you can help me study it. I'm like, why are you asking me for help? Everybody knows I cheat in algebra class. Like, I'm no good to you. Like, <laughs> go talk to somebody else. But my boys, they saw that. They were like, yo, Vanessa like you. You better get on that, because girls only like you for like 13 hours in high school. <laughs> you better strike while the iron's hot. They'll have another boyfriend by fourth period. <laughs> So I gave her a call, I hit her up, you know, that day. I was like, hey, what's going on, Vanessa? It's Nick. She's like, hey, Nick, I'm so glad you called. I'm like, okay, all right, what you get into, girl? She's like, oh, I was just about to touch myself. I was like, oh, word. Okay, all right, all right. So, like, you want me to call you back later? I know this very time-consuming and stimulating. You know, you ain't gonna have no energy to work on algebra. All right, Nick Good Alexander. Killer. All right. And before we go to commercial break, <laughs> Nick, any career highlights you'd like to mention? Career highlights. Um, I mean, hey, look, uh, it's, a, it's a first step in the right direction. That was my first TV credit as a stand-up comedian. You know, um, All right. you know Steve Hofsetter, he gave me an opportunity to, 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 to perform and, and, you know, showcase my skills, and I'm thankful for that. You know, it was... Uh, it's a weird setup because it's not like the normal stand-up shows where you have like the host and like three comics right, doing right. sets. It was like a lot. They take they, they, they take clips and some of it is filmed and then some of it is is, is mixed in. Right. And but they hey it was it was on it was on TV. Yeah. You know it worldwide counts. TV. Uh, worldwide it, Fox my nine. So that was my first you know credit as a stand-up. I've done um, what else have I done? You know I've done a lot of stuff that just feels good on the inside. There you go. And you this know, is worldwide to... as well. We have fans in Australia. Yeah, I got to open up for uh, Tracy Morgan. He was really wow. cool. He's a nice guy to me. You know, some people always have different stories about Tracy. I uh, hope he's getting better also. And yeah, he was right. cool. Sinbad, I opened up for Sinbad. Um, How was he? Sinbad was amazing. He's, man. I mean, off stage, he's a good guy. Oh, even better guy. I mean, oh, just nice. super nice. Just talks to everybody. You know, he talks to the comics, takes pictures with everybody. He just gives good advice. And he's funny. He's just, you can just tell he's just on like all the time. He's it's one great of those to guys. hear when like people you like. Yeah, you know, yeah. I haven't too. been, I haven't been disappointed by a lot of the guys That's good. that I've come That's across good. yet. So it's, the comics have been holding up. Because sometimes they say people don't idolize somebody so much because they might disappoint you. Oh, yeah. When your heroes are zeros. Yeah. Like when I was a kid, we're going to do a wrestling segment next. Yeah. And Andre the Giant and Dusty Rhodes would never sign an autograph for us kids. Really? Never once. Would never sign. Yeah. So I mean, you, Andre just looked the type that he just didn't look too much engaged about life because yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. just uh, uh, then, then superstar <laughs> Billy Graham who's the heel he's signing for everybody posing for pictures that's wrestling a lot of the heels are the yeah. nice guys but and that, a lot of the faces are but that's how you stay relevant because if you're always good to the fans they'll follow you through the good and the bad like yeah. you know um, uh, what's his name he's I mean like Kevin Hart is the best example I mean the interaction that he has with his fans is just like phenomenal and it's able to keep him fresh and he's just growing and growing and growing his audience Four million a movie. That's what we want for you. That's, I, I, That's hey right. man, four. I take four hundred thousand a movie. That's right. You know? yeah. So would we? Yeah. So would we, yeah. You guys, we, we can break it up. You guys. That's we, right. That's all right. a little piece of the pie. We all can eat. All right. So please plug any social media. Yes. Yes. If uh, if you guys are on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, hit me up at at Nick of Comedy. N i c k o f c o m e d y. Nick of Comedy. Uh, Nick Alexander, you can find me if you Google me, YouTube, same thing, Nick of Comedy. Also, if, uh, if you're doing anything tomorrow night, I'm at the Broadway Comedy Club uh, in the Red Room. We have a show 8 p.m. If you want to get your tickets in advance, go on Eventbrite. It's $10. $10. Uh, it's going to be more at the door. So if you get it now, it's $10. And I'm at the Broadway Comedy Club. That's on West 53rd, uh, I believe, 8th Avenue. Three, yeah, and uh, Broadway Comedy Club. I'm hosting it. It's for my man Sean Mallory. We're doing, he's doing a birthday show. Right. It should be really good. And, uh, yeah, Nick of Comedy, follow me, everybody. Thank you. I need yeah. those numbers. There you go. Steve, plug your radio. Um, PlanetLudwig.com. And you can check, listen to our last week's show. Evan Ginsberg was a guest. And Evan did a nice. Evan was he, a guest? He played DJ Evan. I asked him for yeah. three of his favorite singers. We played singers. P Funk, Sun Ra. What was the other one? Al Green. Al Green. That's Al Green. Right. That's right. And Wrestle Rage. You, Rage you can't go wrong with that. That's no. right. And, folks, when we come back, we're going to have our wrestling segment with Matt Lar Lariat and William A. Rebellious. This is going to be fun. Indie wrestling. Later in the show, less bear, music, comedy. Don't you dare go anywhere. Woo! Yeah!
name is Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff. We treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we do 15 years. We a vast years. array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching to help her with her pain. Vicky is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicky is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Could switching to GEICO really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Do dogs chase cats? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. We're going to do a live commercial. Hi, I'm Renee Marie. I'm the uh, president of Language of Love Incorporated Foundation. I'm really happy um, to tell you that we're going to be doing a Language of Love telethon on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please look for uh, the location on my, um, my website, ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And once again, it's ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And the show um, will be on, hosted on the Madhouse TV. It really is important for you to um, be aware of strokes and aphasia. Strokes is the third leading cause of death in, the, in America and the first leading cause of disability. And it really is something that plays no favoritism. And it also really comes when you're not expecting. Nobody expects to have a stroke and nobody expects to suffer from aphasia. And it really does play a huge, make a huge impact in your life and change your life in one split second. So we look forward to having everyone join us uh, once again on March 29, 2015 from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. And you can follow us on uh, ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. Once again, it's ReneeMarieLanguageOfLove.org. And we look forward to seeing you. God bless. Joining us from New Division Independent Wrestling, we have Matt Lariat and William A. Rebellious. Yeah. Thank Woo! you, thank you, thank so you. Tell us about New Division. New Division of Independent Wrestling has been around for a while. It's a Brooklyn-based um, promotion, and we're trying to go into areas of Brooklyn where there haven't been any independent shows. Good idea. Um, 
and one area is Canarsie. Okay. Mm. Canarsie, Brooklyn. Ooh. We're going to be at the Paddock, the Pack Plex Center, 1500 North Paddock at Avenue, right off the uh, Bell Parkway. And when's um, that? March 15th. And that's an afternoon show. Afternoon show starts Which is at, nice. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. Doing, we're doing a little bit of something different. We're giving a meet and greet, which starts at 2 p.m. And then we're doing the show, which bell time is at 4. So it's nice and early. It's a Sunday. You get out of church. You get, you, a lot of people are off work. And it's right around that time frame where you can go watch a wrestling show, come home by 6, 7 o'clock, have dinner, and get ready for Monday. Right. And there's no uh, football to compete with. Exactly. Beautiful. And, and kids know. have to get up from school the next day, so it's family. So, you know, right. Yeah. So, you know, you offer something for them to be on and everything else. And, you know, it, it's a decent area, a beautiful place, and it's at a great time. Exactly. Sounds better than church. That's right. <laughs> well, I can't go yes. sign that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that, was, that was a joke. Yeah, yeah okay. let, me, let me move it's over because I don't want that lightning bolt yeah. coming down. Lord. That's right. The lightning to, bolt hits Nick. Nick is going to hell anyway. That's right. yeah. Well, you know, I'm trying not to co-sign that. With oh, you're going to hell way. for the dog bit. Oh, I, yes. I was going before the dog bit. That's right. <laughs> really? Dog bit? Yeah. So He's over there now in that little box. So, you're, you have... A independent promotion. We have a zillion of them in New Jersey. How do you make yours stand out? I'm ask. I'm going to ask you the tough questions. How do you make it so special that people say this is the must see show this weekend instead of the 32 Saturday night in New Jersey? I'll give you an example. This belt right here. This is the Luchador belt. There's not too many promotions that you'll see offer the Mexican style wrestling. Yeah. So what we did was we bought a champion, and you have to be a luchador type style wrestler awesome. to compete for that belt. I love lucha. So yeah, and it's a it's big in the in the um, East Coast, West Coast, all over the United States. I mean, you have Rey Mysterio, Conan. R Rey all just got released by WWE. Is, yeah, what? that lucha underground's amazing. Yeah, and people like that style of wrestling. So why not give the fans what they want to see? You know, the, the little Spanish I learned was from watching Lucha Libre on TV. Go, uno, dos, tres, cabeza. <laughs> right? Right. You know, and NDIW is a Brooklyn-based federation. And if you know anything about Brooklyn, Brooklyn takes everything hardcore. They take everything to the limit. And that's what NDIW is about. NDIW is where you don't know what's going to happen. But what you do know is the kids are going to meet the wrestlers, take pictures with the wrestlers, yep. get autographs. So and that's a lot of fun. You will not experience that at WWE. No, you won't because it's too big and it's all about the mighty dollar. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. The, the, everything's about the mighty dollar. Everything's about business. But you got to give people what they want and make them want to come. But to let me just it. say something. Um, indie wrestling is one of the greatest bargains in live entertainment. What are the tickets? Ten, fifteen dollars, twenty dollars, twenty-five dollars for VIP access, fifteen dollars for adults, exactly. and ten dollars for children. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what WWE was at the Garden? Uh -huh. Twenty-five to one hundred thirty dollars a ticket, and, and five ninety-nine, five hundred ninety-nine dollars for VIP. Wow. So this is a rare bargain where, for the price of a movie, you can take your kids and exactly. the family and for have, live entertainment and have a good time exactly. and enjoy watching wrestlers. That live in your backyard. Exactly. Mm. And you're right there. You're right on top right of on the exactly. action. The, like la the last it. row is, is right on top of the yeah. action. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's quaint, it's comfortable. Everybody comes out to see the show and enjoy it. Okay, so, Matt, tell us a little about yourself and your role in the new promotion. Well, in NDIW, I'm one half of the NDI NDIW Tag Team Champions along with my partner, Black Zemis. We've been champions for quite a while. And what we do is we have that style of hard hitting and lucha at the same time. Wow. Because mm. he, he's more like the lucha style. I'm more of the hard hitting style. Because the, the way that I've, I've been brought up in the wrestling business, I was a part of a few tag teams. The best tag team I was a part of was called the Rednecks from Hell. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. me and my partner, Big J, we... Down at the doghouse. <clears throat> yes. Low Life Louie is going to be on the show in a few weeks. I love Low Life Louie. Oh, Low Life Louie is, is, is an amazing guy. I love him with all my heart. He's 100% he's genuine when it comes to the wrestling business. 
this guy has more charisma than like any human being on planet Earth. Oh, he's he's What's a sweet he's a sweetheart. Low life Louis Ramos. I got a YouTube him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's he's, he's a, a sweetheart. Excellent, excellent he would work bleed wrestling. buckets, you know, but very I've, charismatic. I could I could I could talk all day about the few matches I've had with him. You know, he's just fantastic in every way. You know, but when it com when it comes to the wrestling business, you know, we all have our our ways of doing stuff. Like for me, I'm still I went from being a redneck from hell to being a, a misfit with another partner to you know, with multiple partners right now, it's going back to where basics is really at for me. Being a part of uh, the doghouse click, that that really means something I for me. I spent some of the best nights of my life down at that doghouse with Homicide and Low Life Louie and um, John Shane and I, that was all family. We, we did a tribute to Bobby Lombardi right here on this show. Yes, if it was, if tell you the truth, if it wasn't for Bobby Lombardi opening up the doghouse when he did, me personally, I probably would have been out in the street doing something stupid. Yeah, Bobby Lombardi and influenced a lot of people. He's not in good health I, now. I love Bobby Lombardi. I, I appreciated him doing that for, for people and guys like Homicide, Low Life Louie, Low Key. These yeah. are guys that I actually look up to and respect with, with admirations. I, I, I can't, words can't explain how, you know, the respect that I have for these guys. And they, they showed me stuff. We'd go down to the doghouse on a Saturday night, and there's Loki versus Homicide. These guys went to Japan, TNA. I mean, these, these are world-class competitors. Yes, they are. Isn't Low, um, Low Life Louie in your documentary? That's right, that's now. right. Lowlife Louie is in my documentary. Uh, it's called Wrestling Then and Now, which was just re-released. It's streaming. And uh, basically, I was on the road. At the, I, I used to teach kids. So mm -hmm. th th this is like mild-mannered English teachers surrounded by all these wild wrestlers. <laughs> and we visit Killer Kowalski and uh, Nikolai Volkov and uh, all these legends. Um, Tiger Khan's in it, my late nice. buddy. One, like, one of my closest friends in the world, passed early. He wrestled for the Hearts up in Calgary. I used, I used to wrestle with Tiger. Really, really good, good-hearted person. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I only heard stories about him. I never got to meet him in person, but I, I heard. Mean, this I is heard... one of my closest personal friends, and uh, he passed at 33. Mm -hmm. so rough. rough. You know, I wanted to ask Matt: Do you prefer tag team or, or individual? For me personally, I love the tag teams because it gives you and your partner a chance to catch a breather. I like to say. Mm. But for me, coming out of, of a good tag team of the Rednecks and going into another tag team, I really never had found that itch to go for a singles title. Mm -hmm. I, would, I, I love being a tag team wrestler. I'll still do it until I can't do it no more. But as being a tag team wrestler, I would rather, I would rather do some singles wrestling and solidify my name and what legacy I have, little legacy I have, you know, as a, as a single competitor and get in the ring with, you know, with some of, some of the top indie guys. But, you know, I'm, I'm more right now concentrating on making sure the tag team, you know, in NDIW making sure that tag team division blows up. Who's your favorite tag teams of all time? I'll throw this out to everybody. Well, I, have, I actually have a few. I like uh, you have Demolition. I like I like their rugged style. Uh, the Heart Foundation with the hit hard hitting and technical. Then you have the British Bulldogs, which are actually pretty they good. Were awesome. They were oh, awesome. They were beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the Wild Samoans. Just yeah, they were a lot of fun. You, you you wouldn't know what you're gonna get with them. Are you Captain Mo, Rikishi, and too cool. No, I'm no, talking no. about Opera, Opera and Sika. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. Wasamoans. They're the, the real ones. They're the, originals. Those, those, one those of them, guys. One of them were in the ring. I forget which one. His <laughs> eyeball popped out, oh, and he pushed, he pushed it, it back, back in. in. You heard was, the story. I, I yeah. think that might have oh, been Afa. I, I think yeah. I heard that story, too. I think yeah. that might have been Afa. We, I did the wrestler with Afa. I was associate producer. Afa trained Mickey. Yeah, yeah that, that, I, that movie was a good movie. But Thank you. The all around... Yeah. The all around, the all around Shameless plug. The all, uh, That's right. <laughs> the all around best tag team that that I I would have loved to get in the ring with would be the Road Warriors. Yeah. Cause just their style was rugged and raw. 
they when you first see them start wrestling, you really never seen. They actually learned how to wrestle as they progressed. Yeah, I'll give you mine. Midnight Express. I don't think anybody touched them. Midnight Express. Oh, they, so unbelievable. They, that. And everybody needs a great rivalry, the Rock and Roll Express. Yes, two, two I beautiful I love the teams. Valiant Brothers. They weren't, they weren't pretty, but the charisma was unbelievable, the Valiant Brothers. Road Warriors, of course, Bulldogs. I thought the Shield were great. I, I thought disbanding them was insane. They, 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 should, they should have at least kept, you know, if they were going to disband them, get rid of Seth Rollins and just put Ambrose and, and Roman together. Oh. That would have been a little unorthodox, but yet you have the un, un, unorthodox of, of Dean Ambrose, but then you have like the like almost sheer raw power from from Reigns. Okay, that would have been you know you you don't know what you're getting. Freebirds were great. Oh yes, yes. I, well, I forgot about the Freebirds. Yeah. I have to mention my favorite tag team of all time, and I'm being biased here because I managed them. The Walking Destruction, okay. Damian Slugger, mm -hmm. and El Fuerte. Okay, T.O.T. Damien Slug okay. is a big man. <laughs> two guys huge. that I manage yeah. are probably two of the largest men walking in professional wrestling right now. And um, that's two why the largest we, that's men why walking in Brooklyn anyway. Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 okay. I've been in the ring with both of those gentlemen yeah. on, on a few tall. occasions in, on different, with, with different teams. So. Uh, how, how tall is, is, is Damien? He's got to be close to seven feet, right? Almost. Yeah. 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 Same, thing with, same thing with T.O.T., almost wow. seven feet. Yeah. And both lay, of them lay been in, I lay thought, and yeah. both them been in the business for years. Yeah. And let me tell you, when they get in the ring, it's exactly what their names say. Yeah. Walking destruction. So yeah, Nick, who's your favorite tag teams? Okay, well, we all know that I'm not the the wrestler uh, guy in the but group. You're a fan. I'm yeah. a fan. I'm yeah. a fan. But you know, it's popcorn it's always, wrestling. It's always, it's always good to get a fan's per perspective, perspective of, of teams. Well, can I, okay, because I, like I said, I was WWF era, a little bit of WCW. Uh, my favorite tag team was, it was Road Dogg and Billy Gunn. They were Remember? colorful, yeah, yeah charismatic. Yeah. James and, yeah, yeah. They, were, they were really, yeah, really some Enjoyed good chemistry. Them, yeah. I would say those were probably the standouts. And, okay. yeah, I, I, like, I like them. Steve? Well, um, yeah, I want to hear his. Well, you know, Matt mentioned the Samoans. Yeah, they were great. They were great. I mean, I remember seeing the Samoans in North Bergen, New Jersey, in a place called the Embassy. Real, you know, real close indie show. Indie show. And... Uh, Oswa spent about 20 minutes just looking at the lights, like afraid of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, <laughs> yes. after, after the show, we saw them walking. So we said, hey, can we have your autograph? He goes, me, bad guy. Like he wouldn't break. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. he wouldn't with KFAB. So we said, come on. We don't, and he just, me, bad guy. We just That's started funny. laughing. He started laughing. And that was my, so the Samoans were cool for that reason. But we didn't, see, minutes, we didn't like, see them together <clears throat> here, but Ray Stevens and Pat Patterson were considered one of the greatest tag teams of all time. And, and um, they were more out in the San Francisco area for Roy Shire, but mm. Stevens and Patterson. Mm. But rather than just talk about wrestling, what we're going to do right now is show six or seven or eight minutes of wrestling footage from this great promotion. And uh, also a little uh, promo for my movie, which you could stream at any time or purchase. So check this out, folks. We're going to give you a little wrestling entertainment right now. Check out the video. From the associate producer of The Wrestler, Evan Ginsberg, comes wrestling then and now. You know what? I think you look better with a mask on! Learn the super secret backstage moves of professional wrestlers. You know, he knows all those moves and can do everything, right? But <laughs> Innovative ways of dealing with sexual harassment. But I actually did make contact on his nuts, and it did hurt. Ask yourself, what the hell is wrong with these people? Watch Saturday morning cartoons with Nikolai Volkov. <laughs> what are you doing here, Nikolai? Yeah, save this child. <laughs> let's do this, let's do it. Amazing likeness there. <laughs> Good looking guy. Hear the wisdom of Killer Walter Kowalski. The simple become, the few they become, or the say become. Never ever be derogatory about yourself. If you're down, take off your stand. I am Superman. 
I am the greatest. I am the <laughs> it's a time capsule of a film. Wrestling then and now. Streaming to your computer, to your phone, to your TV. Download now. From the associate...
New division. All right, show us the post to plug the event. Give out any social media. Get a close-up on this poster. <clears throat> New Division Independent Pro Wrestling. We're going to be at 1500 Paddockett Avenue, Canarsie, Brooklyn. We have matches of the Luchador Champion, Hawaii Allen versus Chris Taylor, the Heavyweight Championship, Justin Toxic versus Lou Nova, the Tag Team Champions. All right. Woo! Tag team champions, yes. <laughs> Doghouse Click versus the Graveyard Disciples. And my personal favorite, coming from the Bronx, with the Bronx titles from the BWF, Walking Destruction. Damian Slugger and El Fuerte, Tower of Torture. All right. Okay, you, we, you, can, reach the, you can see us on Facebook, NDIW New York. And that's just about it, Evan. All right. Yeah. yeah. Any other websites, mm. social media, Matt? Well, I have uh, my Facebook page. It's at Matt Lariat. You know, that's basically if any fans want to come on to that, they can get on there, and, and if they want to become friends, be my guest. The more the merrier. All right, all right. I also have an Instagram page, too, Matt Lariat. That's like all the pictures from whatever shows lariat I Lariat like the Stan Hansen Lariat. Yes, all right. but not, uh, almost as vicious, but, you know. I, I try to bring it, keep that with the clothesline where it's Hanson approved. There you go. <laughs> Hanson approved. Yep. And folks, when we come back, comedian, musician, Les Bayer, and he has some rare wrestling merchandise uh, going back to the early 60s, late 50s. So uh, wrestling fans stick around for that as well. And uh, there's going to be a live music set at the very end of the show. Don't you dare go anywhere. Being a fireman is more than just putting out blazes and giving kittens CPR. Sometimes my duty demands I fan the flames, like when a call comes in from a lady who needs immediate assistance. Maybe she needs help with a computer. Maybe she wants to go antique. Could be as simple as understanding that walking in heels is... It's hard. Aussi simple que l'été dernier à Paris. C'est sympa. Maybe it's ladies' night in, and she wants a simple, delicious recipe for margaritas with a twist. First, a can of limeade. Now hold on to this. You'll be using it. Side note, kittens make everything better. Next, add water. Now, a bottle of light beer. It's not, shh. Trust me, I'm a professional. And last, and most important, Salsa Blue Tequila. Now, you mix it up. Ole. Yes, that's what I'm trained for. Whether it's to help her choose leggings or pants, telling her leggings are pants, or discussing leggings and jeggings versus pant pegging at her next ladies' night in, I'll come to the rescue. Don't call me a hero. Just call me. Let me know what time.
right, we are back with Legends TV, and we are joined by comedian, actor, and lifelong wrestling oh, fan, absolutely. Les Bayer. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Great to be here. Great to be here. And we have a young comedian. We have an, an old experienced comedian. comedian. <laughs> Tell us what it's like to do 40 years in comedy. I, I wouldn't know. I've only been in it for three. Really? Yes. Really? Yes. I, uh, so what were you doing prior? I've had three different careers. I worked in radio and television. Okay, tell us about years. that. I worked for ABC, CBS. I and and what did writer. you do there? I was a news writer. Uh, I worked with, uh, Howard, with Howard Cosell, Marv Albert, before wow. he started wearing skirts. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Shots fired. Yes. Yeah. I actually, I actually uh, worked. He worked at WHN in New York. He was doing the Knicks. He was just starting out. And I was uh, a desk assistant. I programmed the music, uh, wrote sports, uh, did a little bit of everything. And then I went to ABC New Network News, and I wrote for a newspaper. And then uh, I made the move into retailing, and I worked for Bloomingdale's for 15 years. And uh, after Bloomingdale's, got into what I'm doing now, which is uh, I'm a salesman. I sell uh, everything from napkins to toilet paper. Okay. So I've got you covered on both ends. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Let's talk after the show. <laughs> so, so what motivated you to go into comedy later in life? I love comedy. Always, I've always loved comedy. And my girlfriend, three, four years ago, decided to get me a gift certificate to do a stand-up comedy college over at Governor's Comedy Club. Went over there and really got bitten by the comedy uh, bug. You go through six or eight weeks of classes, you get up there on the stage, and then you do your graduation show. When we did the graduation show, there were over 200 people in the audience. And whatever I did went over so well, and it just, you just love getting up and making people laugh. And that's what it is. It's not going to be a full-time career, but I enjoy getting up, making people laugh, and people seem to enjoy what I do. And Nick, what do you think of the idea of comedy college? What do you think? Um, I, you know, there's some people say it can't, can't be taught. It can be taught. I think um, for me, I just chose to be like, I want to do it the old school way and just try and fail. But I think sometimes there's little principles and, and te like a template you can follow, and, and, and it, it does bode you well. So there's, I don't have anything against taking a class. And I'll throw this out to both of you. What's it like when you're on stage and it is failing? What's plan B? <laughs> plan B is, is <laughs> improv and folks. smile. <laughs> improv and smile. It, I must tell you that I was so nervous before the, f the first show. We're standing in the green room back there watching the other people go. And then your name gets called. You go on the stage. And it's, it's like the first time I went on the cyclone in Coney Island. You needed a spare pair of underwear. Right, right, right. So, yeah. so, so it's it, it was nerve wracking, but once you get the first laugh, it kind of eases you into everything else. Yeah, same thing like with wrestling. You right. know that that first that moment that you're standing behind that curtain, prior to you walking to there, you're John Jones. Right. Then when you get to the curtain, you become whoever you are, and once your music hits and you walk out, it's a different world. You know, there, nothing but, behind but, the curtain matters. But, and the only thing that matters is what's in front of you, the people, and who you're going to kick. It's funny because I thought he was going to say, uh, there's nothing like your first body slam. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's, yeah. you know, no, no, no. once you feel it, you're back in the, when, on the mat. With that, what he was saying is true, but as soon as you walk out through that curtain, you still have those butterflies in your stomach. And once that match and everything's going so well in that match, all of a sudden the butterflies go away and you give the crowd what they came to see. You give it 100% of you in that ring and you leave it in the ring. Same thing with the stage. You give it all you on the stage. You leave it there. Whether you, you have the crowd love you, hate you, cheer you, boo you. If you get people to after the match and as you're leaving the venue saying, I enjoyed that. Thank you very much. That was the highlight of my, that then, then everybody's done their job, whether it's wrestling, comedy or music. So. Can I ask you guys a question? Sure. This is what I always wanted to know. It, it depends on the question because it is a table. It, it, it's about, yeah, and it's about cups. Right, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't want it from either of you. I know y'all can turn it on in a heartbeat. So when you guys are like wrestling in the ring, right, and I used to watch WWE, and some people say it's fake, it's real. Okay, are you guys like choreographed, simulating, hey, you're going to get 
off the ropes. I'm going to slam you. Then you're going to slam back. I'm going to do something on your ankles. No. It's, it's really it's, back you, and forth. You want to feel something? Feel right here. Okay. You feel that, right? Right, right, right. Now feel the other hand. That was smooth. That had a bump in. Yeah. Chip bone. Chip bone. Okay. From the easiest move in the world, the bulldog. Okay. Tell him what a, tell him what a blue, bulldog. bulldog is. A bulldog is you, you get, get the guy in a headlock like this, yeah. and you run, <laughs> ah, and yeah. your face right on the mat. Wow. Show us how that's done. <laughs> yes. that was, there's, not, there's not enough room in that. Yeah. This I is one-on-one, really on one, people. We're doing no, it. No, we, we got right. some cushions. We there's can, also, this is wrestling also, college. <laughs> right, wrestling also college. Also, too, okay. the injuries, people say injuries are fake. They're not. Okay. My very first match, two crack ribs. Wow. wow. Two crack ribs. First well, match, two welcome crack to ribs. pro wrestling. My goodness. I wear, I wear braces on both knees. Every match. Right. Every match. Right now, I, I've had a slight dislocated shoulder for for a while, but it's healing up nicely. Like, do you pop it in place before you No, start, it or? it's it's a recurrent thing. Ah, uh, okay. And prior to that, I have currently a partial tear in my right calf muscle. Non-wrestling related. Damn. But I'll still go out there mm -hmm. and give it 100% whether I'm going full speed okay. or slow. Okay. But I give it 100%. Every time. And then Nick, wow. Nick mentioned something. When you, <clears throat> when you guys are out there, I mean, sometimes you see, you can see the wrestlers talking to each other. Right. And they while they're in the ring, I say, you know, throw me off the rope and slam. I, I kind of, I kind of like it, the old, the old school of uh, catch as catch can. You pretty much know from what you're doing in the ring what's coming next. Sometimes, but when you wrestle guys you've never wrestled before, mm -hmm. old school catch as catch can is like always the best, and and. Anybody will do this and try to get footage of them prior to you wrestling them. So this way you have an understanding and you're, you know what you, to expect. Oh, the game tape. Okay. Hey, people have died and been paralyzed in the ring. It's, right. it's really no joke. Yeah. It's, I mean, uh, you, you, that Owen I've Hart thing boxes. was scary when I was little. Oh, yeah. I've had boxers come up to us, come up to me and tell me, you know what? You guys are, are probably some of the best athletes in the world. Because boxers get a minute break. Mm -hmm. They get... Let me get some water, 30, you know, 60, throw, throw, throw something on me. You know, legs, yeah. I get to talk. When you're in that ring for 10, even five minutes, it's five minutes of non-stop Especially a singles action. match. You don't have the... the well, energy. also also remember, too, with boxing, sometimes they, they get off for three months and then train for the next three or four months for another show. So they have that, that whole entire time to heal up from the prior the match. WWE, they're always on the road. They're never... Exactly. You know, same, no the, same thing, the same right. thing with no indies. Vacation. There's sometimes you Man. can get two or three bookings a night. And one booking can be, say, Connecticut. Then you have to, and if you have a booking that same night and it's in Jersey, then you got to travel to Jersey. I'm one of the producers ah. on a movie called 350 Days, which will be out sometime in 2016. The old school superstars like Ric Flair and these guys wrestled 350 days a year. Yeah. WWE right now, they're doing 200 days a year. But imagine being on the road 350, and sometimes double shots, afternoon show and, and a night what? show. That was the old WWF. Yeah, and the NWA. Yeah, they would, they would do a double shot on a Saturday and Sunday. Mm. Friday would be the house shows. Monday would be another type of show. You were always on the road. That's right. I do this once a week. I'm winded. No, I'm <laughs> you got a party. You should, you should come down to. You should, you should actually come down to the training center where we where well, we actually. Tell about the training center real quick. It's uh, called the Gorilla Training Camp. It's in Ridgewood, New York. Okay. It's at a uh, 953C Cypress Ave. We're open six days a week. Okay. You can come down. You know. You can join up with the school, or you can pay a little bit of money for open ring time. Mm. You know, we all get in the ring every once in a while. I get in the ring and and train and do what I have to do. You know, but for a while I was on the sideline, I actually got back in the ring for the first time this past week, and it felt fantastic. Nick the Comic Killer Alexander coming to a wrestling <laughs> there, there, arena there, there, you. there you go. Get yeah, ready. Get right to school so sure. we can train you. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be happy to make you, to make you the, 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 tough, the toughest little man in the world. Oh, yeah, man. Me Once you my... get that first clothesline, that I'll give you nothing you, better. You, nothing you, better you than those two you, crack you ribs. Right. Right. You like, right. Yeah. And you know what it is? I have it in mind, like thinking I could take, I could probably slide under his leg and do a bunch of trickery. <laughs> yeah. And you I don't know, think not, so. and <laughs> yeah. no, no, yeah. I have no chance. Okay. I All will right. let you think you can do that. Okay. <laughs> well, one of the good things about our school is we try to make it affordable for the person coming in because you face it, society now, it's expensive. 
So yes. to come and become a wrestler, a lot of schools charge a lot of money. We offer payment plans. We offer, you know, we offer discounts. We sit down and we talk to you and see, okay, what's your budget? Let's work with your budget. Because you got to understand, this is a passion. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's like bodybuilding. It's like boxing. It's like being a runner. It's like being a comic. Yep, there's a different thing. Writing Comedian classes, and, and acting classes, stand up. But the difference yeah. is that if they don't pay, you break their legs. No, no, we, we no, got no, we got no. a couple of chances. No, we're, 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 we're not that we're not Back that way. we we'll, with, with us. What we what we'll do is we'll work with you. If you're not able to pay, like one month, we'll try to help you out and work with you. And you know, depending on how how things are progressing with you, say if you're with us five or six months, and then all of a sudden you know you lose your job, we'll try to work with you. You know to. From, from, whatever the, from the Bobby Lombardi school, right? Right. Bobby you got yeah. to understand, yeah. you know, the gorilla camp, it's a family. Mm. Yeah. You sign up, and you're our family now. Yeah. I was trained by Johnny Rods. Yeah. And, Rods that's how, great. and that's yeah. how Johnny was. Mm. Everybody, to this day, I can go back to the school. He'll get up, give me a hug like I, I was there yesterday. Mm. And I haven't been there for 20 years. I used to see Rods at the wow. garden every month. He was tremendous. He's excellent. But let's get back to Les before we run yes. out of time. So, Les... <laughs> Any comedy highlights? No. No. Okay, that, that was fast. <laughs> no, no, wait, you know, wait, wait. No, he has I'll, I'll, banjo. I'll, I'll tell you what. The comedy highlights. Career highlights. Career highlights in comedy. My first show, which was it awesome. Go? It was absolutely awesome. I, had, I, I don't like to brag. I had them laughing from the opening joke to the ending. That's awesome, And, man. It, and it was great. Uh, other, I've done some shows with uh, guys like... Chris Roach, Chris Monty, mm. which was a real kick for me to do shows with really big names uh, in the, on the East Coast in, in comedy. So wherever I get jobs, whatever, as long as people are laughing, I'm happy. That's great. That's yeah. great. That's what it's all about. Sh yeah. Show us quickly the memorabilia. Oh, my God. I've, yeah, let's, 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 you know, let's see, I let's see all these rare magazines that nobody's seen in over. <laughs> They've been sitting in my closet forever. <sighs> Wrestling Review was the WWF magazine that they came out with way back when. Well, actually, that's that's NWA, AWA, everything. And, yeah, and yeah. It's, uh, the first issue, which I have buried somewhere, and I wanted to find it, and I couldn't, was with the Graham brothers. But uh, I lost my mic. Okay, here we go. There we go. You want us to hold some of the magazines up so oh, people in the world can see? This one's actually a real nice one. That's a picture of uh, Steve Ludwig in his youth. Uh, that's the that's destroyer. His, yeah. his, Before he got all soft and got dogs and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Before <laughs> the dogs start shitting on him. Yeah. He was fierce, people. He was that's fierce. Right. Look was at Steve. him. Intensity. <laughs> the great Buddy Rock. Yeah. Uh, a, a name that will live forever. Who was Ric Flair's greatest influence. Yeah. Buddy yeah. Very, very much like uh, Ric Flair. Yeah. Uh, who we got here? Is that Is Flair? just... All of these uh, great wrestlers uh, from my youth. Let's show the, show the covers. Let's see. We, we oh, Ray out. Stevens. Ray Stevens. Wow, look at this one. This, this Not is, the country uh, singer. But, uh, yeah, we know. The, 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 the good brawler. Yeah, and good, you the, guys the are going to confuse the camera people. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, we'll, try uh, well, one person up. hold it up. Right, right. So, so Ray Stevens, who Nick is holding, um, when you interview the old school legends, many of them say Ray Stevens was the greatest of all really? time. Mm. Yeah. Here's another great, Johnny Valentine. Oh, yeah. Johnny yeah. Valentine went down in a plane crash. It ended his career. Wow. Tremendous Johnny Valentine. He was, was it premature or was he like kind of, did he have a career? Oh, or, he was oh. a huge main event star. Absolutely. That's Greg Valentine's legitimate father. Okay. Yeah. Is, uh, here's another Buddy Rogers. Great I mean, Buddy they Rogers. Bring back, you know, it brings back so many memories looking at these magazines. So what were they on? You know what? That was before was I channel? started watching. You know, oh, this, okay. this goes back to Do when. Do you remember us? What channel? I think it was channel five. Okay. I oh. think it was five or nine. And you had, uh, it was Vince McMahon Sr. started out as the mm -hmm. host of the show. Mm -hmm. Vince Jr. took over. Uh, then they had Lonnie Starr, if you remember Lonnie Starr. Before he, my time. <laughs> yes. Well, okay. Yes. But Lonnie Starr, who was on uh, radio all the time. Okay. He was a uh, host on some of these shows, and he'd get involved. You know, they'd slap him in the face a few times. And, uh, but it was, it was just so much fun. And I used to, 
used to watch it, and I used to think it was real when I was a kid. Oh, me too. And my father would say to me, it's not real. What's the matter with you? I said, yeah, it's real. Look at, look at this. And then, and I don't know if they used, uh, they used blood capsules as well as the razor blades back then uh, to cut themselves. So, mm. you know, the Graham brothers with their blonde hair, they were always bleeding. Right. And uh, it, it, was, it was just great. It was so much fun. Uh, my friends and I would, every, whenever there was a wrestling match on, you know, we'd be in front of the TV watching it. There you go. So any upcoming gigs? Any social media you like to play? Uh, well, actually, I play in a bluegrass band also. Okay. So uh, we have some things coming up with the bluegrass band. We're going to be doing uh, stuff out at a winery, a Martha Clara winery out in, uh, way out in the North Fork. Uh, was it uh, in May, May 2nd, I think it Nick's is. Nick's favorite gigs are at wineries, right? Oh, yeah. wineries. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. constantly booking me. That's <laughs> right. That's right. But now no, I'm wineries are actually like uh, a lot of comic friends of mine. We do wineries. It's always fun. It's always, they're pretty cool. A lot of free wine also. Yeah, you get liquor up. That's right. That's right. And I've been doing some things at the public library with Mark Breyer. Yeah, we had Mark on the show. We were on the same, we were on the show with him, and they do get a lot of the senior citizens. So, you know, you can do the same act next month, and I don't remember what you saw. Wow. That's funny. Alzheimer's jokes. There you go. That's We're all going to hell from this show. Right. Right. We got the dead old, dog jokes. Listen, I already got a suite in hell waiting for me already, so it doesn't make a difference. See, the, Alzheim, the, the, the ultimate, uh, I'm sure Nick knows, Alzheimer's jokes, the guy who goes to the doctor and he says, well, what's the results of my test? The doctor says, well, uh, I have good, bad news and terrible news for you. And he says, well, what's the bad news? Says, the bad news is you have Alzheimer's. He says, what's the terrible news? He says, the terrible news is you have cancer. He says, oh, thank God I don't, thank God I don't have cancer. <laughs> oh man, oh, that's rough. That's rough. Uh, Les, any uh, websites, social media? Uh, Facebook, uh, just Les Bayer. Like uh, the aspirin? The face, just like the aspirin, and I wish it was related. Don't dismiss your name, Les. <laughs> that's right. Hey, look, man. You're Respect Les that Bayer. name. You know, you know how <laughs> things stick with you when you were a kid? When I, was, I, I remember my English teacher in junior high school, and I didn't understand it then, but he said to me, I know you, Bayer, you're nothing but a pill. Wow. Yeah. Bit of bum. You know, yeah. bum. Basically saying he's hard to swallow. All right. There you go. <laughs> this is like Henny Youngman. I was talking about Henny Youngman before. You, you know, you're talking about Henny Youngman. I was in the Virgin Islands when I was in school and walking through uh. the marketplace in St. Thomas, and there's Henny Youngman at one of the shops, and I'm wearing oh. my Hofster uh, athletic shirt, and he looks at it, and I, I said, there's Henny Youngman, and he looks at me, and he says, hey, kid, they left the laundry marker in your shirt. You know, <laughs> yeah, always on, That's always right. on. <laughs> That's right. So, Les, when, you come, when we come back, we're going to see Les do a live comedy and music set with a couple of surprises. Don't you dare go anywhere, folks. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts are always fresh. I made the donuts. We make them at least twice every day. Time to make the donuts. Not a few kinds, like supermarket. Made the donuts. Time to make the donuts. But up to 52 varieties. The donuts. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. I made the donuts. Dunkin' Donuts, up to 52 varieties, fresh day and night. No supermarket. Can Dr. Robert Brevar. I'm here for Multi Medicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years.
The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multi-Medicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over 15 years. We do a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy, please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000 or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. Tom Vealy from Madhouse TV, and when I'm not at the studio, I'm here at the Harrison Law Group. This is my real job. And this January 2015, Brett and I are putting together a show called Legal Straight Talk. It'll be aired on Cablevision as well as here at Madhouse TV. You need to tune in. This information that we're going to be giving the public is the real deal. It's all about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. So tune in this January 2015 for a new episode of Legal Straight Talk. Okay, we're on. Nice to be here uh, with Evan, and uh, it's great, especially after being at Mohegan Sun last night. <laughs> anyway, if uh, if China attacked uh, Russia from the rear, would Greece help? Well, uh, what do you think? You think they should put the pictures of uh, missing transvestites on cartons of half and half? I just went to uh, the doctor the other day for my annual checkup. First thing he did, stuck his finger up my ass. Going to have to switch dentists. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was driving down uh, the street the other day. There's a new Denny's that opened up. And they had a big sign in the window. Seniors, buy one, get one free. Got two old people working at my house now. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And Evan... Evan, uh, most people don't realize this, with the success of uh, that great movie, American Sniper, Evan is going to be coming out with his uh, remake of it. It's about a uh, guy who does circumcision. It's called American Snipper. <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the invisible man married the invisible woman. Their kids are nothing to look at either. <laughs> I don't know if anybody has uh, heard about the Pope, but the uh, Pope has a rare testicular disease that they just discovered, and uh, the doctors have told him uh, there's only one cure for it. He has to have sex. The Pope told him, I'm the Pope. I can't have sex. You know, I'm the spiritual leader of the world. They said, if you don't have sex, you're going to die. So he says, well, on second thought, I will have sex, but only on four conditions. And the doctors say, what are those conditions? He said, well, the first one is she has to be blind so that she can't know that she's having sex with the Pope. The second condition is she has to be deaf, so she can't hear that she's having sex with the Pope. Third condition is she must be dumb, so she won't be able to tell anyone she's having sex with the Pope. And the doctor said, okay, that's great. What's the fourth condition? Pope says, big tits. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so this uh, man goes to his doctor and he says, uh, Doc, I need some Viagra. I just can't get it up with my wife anymore. So the doctor says, uh, okay, why don't you bring your wife in and, uh, you know, we'll check it out and see what's going on here. So he's, his wife goes in for a checkup and the doctor says to the guy's wife, take your clothes off and I want you to turn around at three, 360 degrees. So she takes her clothes off, she turns around 360 degrees. He says, okay, now I want you to get on the table. And he puts her in all these weird positions, takes a look, calls the husband back in, and he says, you're right, I can't get it up either. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of uh, religion and things, the 85-year-old church organist, she uh, invites the priest up to her apartment for some holiday wine and cookies, and the uh, priest comes up and he notices something very strange. There on the organ is this bowl of water with a condom floating in it. So he doesn't say anything, and they're having cookies and tea and a drink, and finally says, she says, Mrs. Jones, if you don't mind me asking about that bowl of water on the organ, she says, oh, you know, it's funny you should ask. I was in the park a couple of months ago, and I saw this little foil packet lying on the ground, and it said on the packet, to prevent disease, place on organ and keep moist. You know, I haven't had a cold all winter. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, you talk about everybody's worried about identity theft. I had my identity stolen uh, a couple of weeks ago. Ten minutes later, the guy went bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve is sitting here patiently, and uh, we're going to bring Steve up for a little surprise. Oh. Uh, we only worked on this for the past, what, two weeks? No. <laughs> no. We're going to uh, do, instead of my uh, usual song parody that I do, we're going to let Steve sing uh, a song that is associated with the banjo. It comes from that great uh, TV show, The Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, yeah. a couple months ago, uh, Donna Douglas, Ellie yes. May passed away. That's so right. in, in the spirit of pop culture. And Donna looked nothing like what she looked like when no. she was in that show. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna, come here. I have Jem with us too. Gonna, he's gonna be here with us. Okay. So, uh, well, all right, Jem, down boy. <laughs> I have two of those. <laughs> okay, here we go, ready? Come listen to the story about a man named Jem. Poor mountaineer, but okay. Uh, then one day he was shooting at some food. Went out through the brown came a bubbling cream. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know. Slow it down. Old Jed's a millionaire. Help me, Jed. Ken Hogue said, Jed, move away from there. They said California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the trunk and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is. Movie stars, swimming pools. Take it, Les. Come on, Jim. of Steve. Anything else, Evan? Just take All that right, list. So I guess uh, that's, that's a wrap. Uh, I could do one more song, or if you have time, if not, that's yep. it. Yep, take us out, Les, with one another more. song. Okay, here's uh, when we got married last Friday. My <laughs> girl was right there beside me. Our friends were all gone. We were alone, side by <laughs> side. We were so happily wed when we got into bed then, her teeth and her hair she put on the chair, side by side. One glass eye so tiny, one hearing aid so small. Then she took one leg off and put it on the chair by the wall. I stood there broken hearted, most of my girl had departed. I slept on the chair, there was more of her there. Side by side. Thank you. <laughs>